Good morning, everybody. It's good to see everybody online this morning for School Away from School. And I'll tell you what, we're going to have a great day today. Uh, we've got a few um, students in here today that are going to be testing and, and um, getting a little bit of help in math and science and other things. And, uh, but it's good to have everybody here today. And uh, so let's stand up. We're going to say our pledges and we're going to start the day like we always do. All right. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its word in my heart that I might not sin against God. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty for all who believe. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, let's turn in our, hymn, our Bibles to the book of Joshua, Joshua chapter 1. <clears throat> the title of the day's uh, devotional is Averages. Averages. You know, I think it's uh, good that, that sometimes we average grades and things like that in school. And uh, so you don't get what you actually thought you should have. Because sometimes you have a really bad grade. And then if everybody has a really bad grade, we can average them together and you can have a good grade. So, but we're going to be looking at averages today. Joshua chapter 1, starting at verse number 1, it says, Now after the death of Moses, uh, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, uh, go over to uh, this Jordan, thou and all the people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses." From the wilderness of this Lebanon, even unto the great river uh, Euphrates, all of the land of the Hittites, and under the great sea towards the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. For uh, be strong and of good courage, for unto this people uh, shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto thy fathers to give them. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for today. We thank you for the ones who are online and watching. We just pray now that you'll guide and direct in these devotions that we can get something out of them. We can use in our own life. We just love you. We thank you for what you've done for us. Help us to have a good day today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, <clears throat> I want to talk to you a little bit about averages. You know, how important averages are in our own lives and, and what averages actually mean. You know, in the scripture that we just read, uh, in verse 2, we see that Moses was called the servant of God. It says, Moses, my servant, is dead. You know, um, if you look at uh, Genesis chapter 6 and verse 9, it says, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. It says that Noah was a just man. He walked with God. In Genesis chapter 17 and verse uh, 4, it says, as for me, behold... My covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Abraham was to be the father of many nations. Abraham walked with God. In 2 Peter chapter 2, and verse 7, it says, And delivered just Lot, uh, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. You know, Lot, it says, was a just man. In Acts chapter 13, in verse 22, it says, and when he had removed him, he raised up unto him David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, 
I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. David was a man after God's own heart. But hold the phone just a minute. Hey, wait a minute. There's more to this than what that is. We need to take a look at this a little bit closer. You know, Noah, wasn't Noah after the flood? Didn't he plant a vineyard? And didn't he get uh, grow grapes and make wine and get drunk and laid naked in his tent? You know, Abraham, uh, wasn't Abraham the one who disobeyed God and he went down into Egypt uh, instead of staying in Canaan? Didn't he uh, uh, have an adulterous affair with his wife's handmaid and had an illegitimate child? Wasn't he the one who lied to the king, Abimelech, about Sarah being his sister instead of his wife? Wasn't Moses, wasn't he the one who did not want to lead the children of Israel into the promised land, had all kinds of excuses why he could not do that? Um, and did not do what God wanted him to do? You know, isn't he the one who broke all ten commandments at the same time because of his anger? Remember when he came off of Mount Sinai and he threw the ten commandments? He broke all ten of them at the same time. He's the only one that ever did that, broke all ten commandments at the same time. But wasn't he the one when God told him to speak to the rock, struck the rock instead? <clears throat> Didn't Lot pick the fertile plains of Sodom and Gomorrah? And then he pitched his tent towards the sinful Sodom. Wasn't it Lot who offered his two daughters to the queers of Sodom instead of, of the angels? Wasn't it Lot who took his time leaving Sodom before it was destroyed? Wasn't it Lot who had an affair with his two daughters and they gave birth to his, son, uh, his children? David. Wasn't it David who had the affair with Uriah's wife? Wasn't it David who had Uriah killed and then married Bathsheba? Wasn't it David who ate of the showbread which only the priest should have eaten? Wasn't it David who had pride and had the people numbered? It doesn't add up to me that these, had because they had done wrong with God, should have been given what they did. You know, they all sinned before a perfect God. They all did not obey God as they should have. Yet God still had praise for each of them. Why? Why was it after they had sinned against God? Why is it after they had done all this? Why was it God had praise for them? I believe that God averages our lives. I believe that God averages our lives. There's a lot of preachers that wouldn't, believe, uh, that wouldn't agree with me on this, but I do. I believe that he takes the good and the bad and he averages what we uh, do good for him and what we do bad for him. He averages the two together and that's what he comes up with. Let's take a look at Noah for a minute. Noah built an ark. It took him 100 years to build that ark. He preached for over a hundred years for the people to repent because the world was going to be destroyed. But yet no one listened to him. He was in the ark for one year floating around the earth with no dry land. He had two of every animal in the ark that he had to take care of for that year in the ark. He did exactly what God had asked him to do for 120 years. Think about that. He obeyed God for 120 years. Even though everybody was against him, he still obeyed God. Abraham, he wandered in a land which was not his homeland. You know, when God told him to go, he went. When God wanted him to offer him his only son, on a sacrifice, he did it. Moses wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. He went before Pharaoh and had all the plagues 
that went on to Egypt. He led the people who were very rebellious. He spent 80 days on Mount Sinai talking to God face to face. He did all God asked him to do. Lot, he was with Abraham for 40 years. He preached to the people of Sodom. He saw his family taken away from him. He lost everything that were worldly possessions to him. David, God saw a boy with a sling. He saw a young man who was a leader of the people. He saw someone with a pure heart. He saw someone who looked to him for all of his strength and guidance. You know, we need to look at, at some averages in people's lives. There is a, a baseball player by the name of Sammy Sosa. The year that he hit all of his home runs, he struck out 40% of the time. Michael Jordan, one of the best uh, basketball players ever to live, he missed over 60% of his shots. Matt Kenseth won NASCAR one year. Uh, he had the highest point standing, and he only won three races. Tiger Woods, the number one money leader in, in golf, missed the cut 40% of the time in the tournaments. When we look at averages of these people, we take the good and we take the bad and we average it together and we come out with the final score. You know, if God did not average what we do for him, if, he, if we just goofed up one time, God would throw up his hand and say, okay, that's it, you're done, and he would take us out. I believe that God looks at us, and he looks at our whole lifetime all at one time. And he says, you know what? This is good. This is good. This is, oh, this is bad. This is good. This is bad. This is good. This. And he averages the good and the bad together. And that's why he allows us to keep going on the way we are now. You know, even though when we goof up, God punishes us for what we've done. You know, he doesn't just write us off because of it. You know, Moses messed up at the rock. God did not allow him to go into the promised land. He, went, he led the people for 40 years. Think about that. 40 years. He was 120 years old. And God said, because you disobeyed me, you're not going to go into the promised land. David was punished for his sin with Bathsheba. His son died, and God told him that, that war would always be in his life for the rest of his life, and that his own son was going to try to take the kingdom away from him. And we know that Absalom did. Lot lost his whole family. But God still called him a just man. You know, I just praise God for averages. I wonder where I would be if God did not average out my life. And he took all the bad things I did and says, okay, this is it. Okay, Satan, you can have him. You do with him what you want. But I just praise God that he averages the good and the bad together. And he says, this is what I need. You know, in our lives, before we say to our spouse, it's all at, over after 1 or 10 or 20 or 30 years, sit down and average the good and the bad that has happened over those many years, not just the bad that has happened recently. Teenagers, before you write off mom and dad, sit down and average the good things that they've done for you all of your lifetime and average the bad. And I guarantee you're going to find out more good than bad. Mom and dad, before you throw in the towel on your teenagers, look at the averages over their lifetime. What have they done good? What have they done bad? 
Before you say, I'm not ever coming back to church again, my feelings are hurt, take an average and see what God has done for your life through this church. Before you give up on life and say, what's the use? I've had enough. Take an average of your life and see the good things that you've been able to accomplish and see the bad things and average the two together. How your life has been used for the honor and glory of God. Before you take and cash in a, on a job after 15 years, average the good and the bad. You know, I just praise the Lord. God averages our lives. Takes the good and the bad. You know, there are many in the church who will come to me and feel bad because of their health or age. The inability to do things that they used to do. They want to take and serve the Lord more in the church. But isn't that what you're doing? Is doing what God wants you to do? Take a look at the past and see what you've done for the Lord. See what you're doing now for the Lord. You know, if you're young and you had better be doing all you can for the Lord now because when you get older, it may be too late. If you're not doing anything for the Lord now, what's he going to average later on? What's he going to put into your average later on? You know, if you're a baseball player and you wait until the last two years of, of your um, career and then you hit all kinds of, of uh, home runs, that doesn't help your average over that time period very much. If a basketball player waits till the finish of his career and he scores all kinds of points, that does not average out very well with the rest of his, of his life. There's not one of us in this room or listening online who can ever do enough to get ourselves into heaven. We can't work and do enough to get ourselves into heaven. You know, we can't give enough money. We can't uh, do enough for lo uh, the Lord. But you know what? We can start right now doing something. So that our averages all come together in the end. And God looks at our average and says, Hey, well done, thou good and faithful servant. There's none righteous, no, not one. We need to realize that none of us are good enough to get to heaven on our own. You know, we need to accept Christ as our personal Savior before you can take and start averaging your life. You know, where are your averages today? If God would take and call you home, and you stood before God right now, what would he look like? What would your life look like before him? Would you have more bad or would you have more good? Would you have done a lot of bad or would you have done a lot of good for him? You know, if God averages our life, where would we be on his scale? Would it tip and say, well done? Or would it tip and say, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. We need to realize the first thing we have to do is accept him as, as Lord and Savior of our life. And once we do that, then the scale starts to tip the other way. I believe that God averages, and one day we're going to find out what our averages were all about. One day we're going to stand before him, and he's going to have a crown of righteousness for us. He's going to have jewels in our crown. We're going to get award, rewards in heaven for what we did. And we're going to have rewards taken away for what we didn't have. We need to have a good average before God. 
If our average before God is, is what it should be, I guarantee you're going to have the rewards you need. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this morning. Thank you for all you've done for us. I just pray now that you'll use this devotion. Help us, I pray, that we can always do what's right and that um, our averages would be great before you. Father, be with us now, I pray. Guide us and direct us through the day. Help the students that they can get their pace work done. Pray for the ones that are here to test. I pray that we might get their uh, test completed and that they can uh, uh, go back home and work on more paces. We just thank you so much for loving us. Be with us now, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Today's letter is H T E A blank H. If you know what it is, call in and um, we'll know what the word is. No points for today because today is Thursday, but you can still guess the five points today. Huh? Zero. Okay. It's five points today, zero tomorrow. So you can still get five points if you guess it today. All right? So, all right. You guys all have a good day. Get your pace work done. I am so proud of all of you. I am. I just, um, uh, Miss Nancy and I, we were talking yesterday, and um, uh, I'm looking at the pile of paces that are done, and it's about this high, and that's how many you've gotten done since we haven't been in school. And some of you are doing such a great job, and I just am so proud of you. And I'll tell you what, I can't thank moms and dads enough for helping your children to get their work done. And um, I think we're one of the only schools in the area that um, over 80% of our, our students are finishing their work this year. Uh, there was uh, some teachers that were... Um, interviewed the other night on TV, and they said less than one-third of their class is online in the morning with them. And of that one-third, there's only a fraction of that that are actually completing their assignments. That's not the way it is in this school, and I just praise the Lord for it. I just, I cannot thank all of the students enough for what they're doing and getting uh, all their work done. So everybody have a great day today. And we will see you all tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock for devotions. So you guys have a good day today. Thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow.